What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here, and I often ask the audience what videos you want me to make. That way I know and kind of gauge on the more popular questions I'm being asked over and over, kind of which direction to make my videos. Now this one I'm asked quite often, and I didn't know the answer, and I found myself actually using a config that a lot of people are wondering whether or not it's good or bad, and I figured we'd go ahead and talk about it, and that being, are you actually causing yourself any performance uh, loss by using a single PCI Express power connector for your GPU that has a pigtail like this? Or should you be running independent power cables per plug on your GPU? This one's gonna probably be a little bit interesting because I'm not an elect electrical mathematician. Today's video is sponsored by LastPass. And let's face it, it's no fun getting locked out of your online accounts because you can't remember your password. That is really irritating. Just ask Nick. That's okay though, because with LastPass, you don't have to remember your passwords, your mother's maiden name, your security questions, because it keeps everything easily accessible at your fingertips, synced across all of your devices using multi-factor authentication, keeping everything as secure as possible. And the best part is, you don't have to have a single password for everything because we keep forgetting them. LastPass will make sure that everything is unique, keeping your accounts even more secure. It even has a digital safe allowing you to keep all of your VIP documents easily accessible like driver's license, birth certificate, passport, and whatever else you could possibly think of. So stop all of the insanity of forgetting all of your passwords and get LastPass for free by following the link down below. So here's what we're gonna do. We are gonna go ahead and overclock this because I'm gonna just skip the base stock test. There's no point in doing stock. We wanna see if there's a limitation to how much power we can pull through those cables. Uh, GP voltage is at 100% power curve. So it's gonna go 100% sooner in the, in the well, curve of where the frequency is. Memory clock, we added 400. Fan speed, I'm at 90% because fans will also draw voltage and power delivery will affect fans as well. And since we have three fans on this, I wanna make sure that's not gonna be negatively affected. And then we've got our power target, target maxed out here at 120. So what I'm gonna do right now is run Valley Benchmark Ultra Settings with uh, ADEX MSAA and everything is maxed out at 1080p. So we're letting the graphics card just render as many frames as it possibly can. We're right now getting 155 of them in that part of the screen. Absolutely ridiculous. So we'll do the test three times and then we'll average those numbers and see what we get. So our last score here was a 6032. When we averaged the three scores that we got, the 6028, 6041, and 6032, we've got a 6033.6 .6 average score. So let's go ahead and change the cables out and see if anything improved. So we got our two independent power plugs in there and we've got all the settings that are still identical to what they were and I saved my profile. The fans are also still running at the speed of sound basically or the, yeah, I guess that was kind of a bad analogy but whatever, they're loud, that's all that matters. So we're gonna run the same three tests and see if we get any improvement. Fun fact though, when we did our test the first time around, three times in a row with this overclock and these fans at 90%, we actually didn't get any hotter than 50C. That was pretty amazing actually. Not bad for air cooling. Go baby, go. Okay, so first test, we've already seen an improvement in score. Not a lot, but still 6,106. When we were averaging in our last test, the highest score was a 6,041. So, wow, okay, well, you know the routine. We've gotta go ahead and go through all three to get our average. And uh, I quite honestly wasn't really expecting that, if you wanna know the truth. See, 6103 on the second test, that's much closer than the previous test, which are fluctuating upwards of, uh, what's the eight, nine points. That's fluctuated three. Okay, one more test. Okay, so our last test here was a 6093. If we average the three scores out, we got a 6100. So that was actually an improvement just by changing the cables. We didn't change any of the settings. Now there's one other test I wanna do here real quick. Now, now granted, this is just Valley benchmark. It would have been probably prudent to go through the entire testing suite, but I just kind of wanted to see on the surface if there was any improvement to any of this. Now, what I want to see is if we can actually get any better overclocking out of this. The max I could get out of this before was a 2088 when I did the review. So let's see if we can get anything extra out of this right now. We've been playing around with the overclocking for a little bit here, and this was a little bit of an unexpected result. I could actually get the card to run 2126 for probably, I don't know, about five minutes before it actually crashed, which is way better than any card I've had come in here so far I was able to do, including the Poseidon. But then again, we'll talk about that a little bit at the ending here, but we're running 2113 megahertz right here, pretty stable, 48 degrees C on the card, yeah, I, wow. So who would have thought there was actually some improvement to be had right here? I mean, seriously, I didn't. I 
quite honestly didn't expect there to be any difference. You can see there's numbers right there, 21, 14 actually, during that test. Huh. Transition. I'll be honest, going into this video, I didn't expect there to really be any sort of difference. I've done a lot of testing with just using the pigtail cables with a single PCI Express power plug coming off the PSU on high-end cards like this and never saw any sort of negative results. I mean, we did gain a little bit more uh, score when it came to Valley Benchmark and we gained one extra clock tick, we'll call it, one, one extra step when it came to overclocking by simply using two dedicated power cables. And there's a lot of factors that can actually factor into that. The type of power supply you're using, how many rails it is. I was kind of going by some of the research that I did prior to this video on what to expect and I didn't expect anything because of a specific comment made here in a seven year old Tom's Hardware thread uh, about the difference between why uh, there's only one extra 12 volt lead in an eight pin power supply plug or PCI Express plug versus a six pin and how it can be double the rating from 75 watt to 150 watts with one extra 12 volt. But then someone did a really good explanation of what the pinouts are and which one is sense wires and all that sort of stuff. But then they said this, they said that a proper eight pin PCIe can supply 12 volts at 11 amps with three lines or three 12 volt lines in there equaling 396 watts of power to a graphics card. So that's why you can pigtail them. This card is not pulling anywhere near 396 watts, but obviously we saw that it has some sort of effect. Maybe it's the cleanliness of the power delivery. I have no idea, but it did allow us to overclock a little bit farther. And as we saw, we gained a little bit of additional score. Now, would you have noticed any of those two things that one additional clock tick or the 70 or so extra points we saw inside of Valley Benchmark while gaming? No, probably not. But it was a neat little experiment to do. So if you know more about this and why this is, then let me know down in the comments below because I still am a little bit flabbergasted as to why even though one pin can supply the amount of volts and amps and watts that we need on a card like this, why we saw any sort of difference whatsoever. Temps were the same, clocks were the same, but we saw an improvement with the two power cables, even though the clocks were the same. I couldn't, I couldn't really understand that one. Anyway, time to go guys. Thanks for watching. If you got any more comments or any more questions you guys want me to tackle or any video topics you think would be neat for the channel, you know what to do. This video is derivative directly from the inbox. So send me your suggestions. And as always guys, I'll see you in the next video.